Fayou, does BART Administrator 3 need to be a uh, something, a panelist?
Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Recording in progress.
Good morning, everyone. I, I know we're all having fun uh, chatting, but we're going to get the meeting started. And welcome um, to the BART board meeting um, on December 15th. Uh, District Secretary, will you please call the roll? Certainly. Director Foley. Present. Vice President Lee. Here. Director McPartland. Here. Director Rayburn. Here. Director Simon. Director Allen. Here. Director Ames. Here. Director Dufty. Here. President Saltzman. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, Director Simon, would you lead us in the pledge? Thank you. Please note, pursuant to all necessary findings having been made by the Board of Directors of the San Francisco Bay Area Rapid Transit District for itself, as well as all subordinate legislative bodies, to continue remote public meetings in the manner contemplated under Urgency Legislation Assembly Bill Number 361, public participation for this meeting will be available via teleconference and in person. If you've joined us here in person and you would like to make a public comment, there are blue speaker cards at the back that you can fill out and then give them to the district secretary. And if you're joining us via Zoom, you can use the raise hand feature, or if you're calling into Zoom, you can dial star nine and then star six to unmute. So item two is report of the board president. I don't have one. I'm going to be talking probably too much throughout this meeting, so I'll skip that part. Do we have any board committee reports? No. Um, then we will move on to the introduction of special guests. Before um, I introduce um, our, our partners over at BOSS, is, are there any other special guests to introduce? OK. So for almost two decades, BART has hosted an annual to holiday toy drive to support local nonprofit organizations. And it's a special tradition that continues to connect BART staff in this board to hundreds of children and families around the Bay Area. Today, I'm honored to introduce this year's recipient organization, Building Opportunities for Self-Sufficiency, or BOSS. We're joined by Donald Frazier, the CEO of BOSS, Sonia Fitz, Chief Development Officer, Melvin Cowan, Chief Operating Officer, and Satya Frazier North, Marketing and Communications Manager. So thank you all for joining us here today. For the annual toy drive, BART employees donate new toys and gift cards to an organization selected by the board president. And this year, I'm proud to share that BART collected more than 750 toys and $500 in gift cards. So Thank you to everybody who contributed for your generosity. Bart also received a generous toy and uh, gift cards donation from our advertising partners at Outfront Media and their local Berkeley staff of 50 people. Outfront has been with Bart since 2018 and has been a regular contributor to our toy drive. They just completed the first phase of digital screen installations, including 190 ad screens that are now brightening our stations. And I have to say, I really love the BART messages on those um, and how they keep changing and they're, they're really fantastic. Um, we have Rob Schilling from Outfront Media in the audience and would love to thank you for being here today. Organizing the toy drive takes a lot of effort. And before I invite our guests from BOSS up to speak, I'd like to recognize the hard work of the External Affairs Office in BART Police Department. It's a true partnership coordinating the toy collection across several locations, ensuring donations are counted and logged, and of course, scheduling the delivery to our wonderful organizations. Thank you to all the staff that make this event possible. Now to BOSS. BOSS has served the people of Alameda County from Berkeley and Oakland to San Leandro and Hayward for more than 50 years, just like BART. They are an award-winning nonprofit whose mission is to help homeless, 
poor and disabled individuals achieve health and self-sufficiency and to fight against the root causes of poverty and homelessness. Every year, BOSS serves at least 4,000 people across the county, supporting individuals and families with a variety of needs. Their services range from re-entry and job search support to healing groups and counseling. Since 1971, BOSS estimates it has helped more than a quarter million people, which is amazing. And the work doesn't stop there. In the new year, BOSS will open a community healing trauma recovery campus in Oakland, a one-stop shop for services, including community healing and restorative justice groups. It will also unveil a new cabin community to provide housing to those in need of shelter. On behalf of the BART board and the entire BART family, thank you for everything you do to transform people's lives and empower those who have faced adversity. It is my pleasure to invite BOSS's executive director, Donald Frazier, up to the podium to accept this year's donations and to say a few remarks. And after the board meeting, I'd also like to invite everyone to our toy drive reception just across the lobby for some food and holiday cheer. Welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate this. I just want to say on behalf of BOSS, uh, thank you so much uh, to general manager, the directors of BART, the um, uh, BART police, your external affairs uh, people, and a special thanks to Director Salzman for the recommendation of BOSS uh, to receive these gifts. Um, I do want to say with the people that we serve, uh, we opened up a women and children's uh, campus in East Oakland. We have our families. Um, facility, homeless facility in Berkeley, one of our largest uh, facilities, about 100 beds. Uh, our um, survivors of violence and their children uh, will benefit from this as well. And I do want to say 100% of the people that come through our doors are in poverty, uh, deep poverty, and uh, uh, facing trauma, either past trauma, uh, post-traumatic stress. And one of the things that we understand is that sometimes they don't have the funds, especially this time of year, to do what they want to do for their children. So this gift is amazing. And I, I would just say to you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It's gonna put a lot of smiles in children's faces this year. It's going to uh, relieve a lot of the parents where they can feel some pride of, of having to the opportunity to give their children a gift. Um, and this is amazing. So I just wanna thank you again on behalf of our board of directors, on behalf of our staff, on behalf of the people that we serve, and definitely the children, send you warm wishes and grateful uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think if, if you and anybody from your team wants to come up, we'd like to do a photo with the board and with the toys.
Thank you. Um, do we have any uh, public comment on item 4A? I didn't receive any speaker cards and I don't see any hands raised on Zoom. Okay, then we will move on to item five, which is the consent calendar. Do we have a motion? I'll move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any public comment on the consent calendar? No speaker cards and I don't see any hands raised. Okay, then let's go to the vote. Director Foley. Aye. Vice President Lee. Yes. Director McPartland. Aye. Aye. Director Rayburn. Yay. Director Simon. Yes. Director Allen. Yes. Director Ames. Yes. Director Dufty. Yes. President Saltzman. Yes. Thank you. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. We'll now move on to item 6A, the general manager's report. Good morning, Board President Saltzman and members of the board. Bob Powers, General Manager. Um, I just have one item I just wanted to brief the board on here, and it's a bittersweet item, if if I could, and it's uh, the retirement of, of Paula Frazier here. And I have some re prepared remarks, but I, I, you know, I did want to take a few minutes to talk about um, how at least I think of of Paula, and I take it back to a. Uh, I was listening to something the other night. And the concept was the greatest of all time, right? And what I was listening to was on uh, the World Cup that's going on right now, right? But you've heard this discussion, whether it's professional sports, an individual or a team, right? About the greatest of all time. It's a philosophical, it's a thought discussion, right? Because it's very hard to pinpoint the greatest of all time. You know, it's some of it's subjective, some of it's qualitative, some of it's, you know, quantitative, but it really is just a thought exercise and it's very philosophical. But I got to thinking about that this morning coming in, you know, because when I was listening to it and when I've heard this discussion, greatest of all time, right? Uh, you know, elements of that discussion, let me just give you a few elements of that discussion, durability and longevity, you know, and I look at the, and I look at Paula, um, 42 years at BART, 42 years, um, you know, versatility, right? You hear about that all the time. Paula can do anything and has done everything at BART. Honestly, I, it's, it's quite amazing, right? And so I'm like, yep, you know, she's in that discussion, right? And then they really, the discussion really pivots to, you know, impact on the team or the agency, not only the team, but the community and the industry, right? And so you look at Paula, you know, knowledge of the system, um, what she means to her staff and every other BART employee, um, you know, her trailblazing in the LGBT community. You know, you talk about community and industry. She is second to none. Um, and um, her partnering with local agencies, you know, and bringing that wealth of knowledge to everybody, whether it's the fire departments, SFMTA, AC, it doesn't matter, you know. And then, you know, the discussion goes to leadership and integrity, right? You can't beat Paula on that. Literally, you can't. You know, and I, you talk about greatest of all time, and again, we're never going to get there on that, but certainly in the BART family, in the Bay Area community, in the transit industry as a, as a national thing, you know, Paula is in those discussions, right? You cannot not have you know, Paula Frazier in those discussions. And it's just an honor that I happen to be the general manager and say a few words about Paula. It, it's just been, you know, she and I have a special bond. We can pretty much say anything to each other at any time. And I have learned, you know, every now and then there's a, you know, people come across your path that uh, know more than you do. And the best thing you can do is provide them with the resources and kind of get out of the way and move some people out of the way to let them do their job. And there is nobody better at doing her job than Paula Frazier. So Paula, I'm going to try to get through this. Um, all right. These are the formal, formal comments. That was just for me, Paula. The, um, so Paula started her career in 1980. 42 years ago as an emergency procedures assistant at a paramedic um, with BART PD. 
Um, and she started right after the Trans Bay 2 fire temporarily closed the San Francisco, closed San Francisco. Um, I said she's skilled in virtually all operations of, of BART, including operations control center, power distribution, station and line operations management, system safety, and heavy rail. She knows it all. She's been progressively promoted through the ranks of transportation, um, including tower operations, line supervision, train control, stations, rail manager, and her current role as assistant chief transportation officer. That's, we call an ACTO, you know, that's, um, you know, in, in BART, she's, you know, an ACTO. Uh, she's extremely active in APTA and served as the operations chair for the International Rail Rodeo, where she led BART to not one, but two overall championships in the, in the uh, APTA Rail Rodeo. Um, not sure it's ever been done before. Um, Paula has always been out and proud gay employee uh, starting in the 80s. Uh, matter of fact, she paid for and registered BART um, in the first San Francisco Gay Freedom Pride Parade in 1995, and she did this with her own money. So on behalf of the BART family, Paula, I would like to present you with this crystal train and congratulate you. Um, and you will no longer need to sleep with your cell phone underneath your pillow. <laughs> You know, I was thinking today coming in, in 1980, some of the people in this room weren't born yet. <laughs> and I had started for BART. And I had told my boss, the chief, that when I came to BART, I was shocked. They had paid holidays, overtime holidays, for Martin Luther King's birthday, before it was a national holiday, decades before it was a national holiday. Chinese New Year was a paid overtime holiday. Uh, and Cinco de Mayo, and I knew what kind of a place I was coming to work at. It's pretty incredible in the Bay Area. And in 1980, you know, I had wanted to be an officer in the Coast Guard, and that wasn't possible. Uh, and but I could come work for BART. Already, the the boards, the GMs, the Labor Relations Department, they had a policy that they did not discriminate for sexual orientation. And so I could rise to the ranks of an officer here at the Bay Area Rapid Transit. Isn't that something? So thank you for your kind words today. And um, the favorite part for me is I am not 24 seven with my iPhone under the pillow, just like, just like GM Power said, thank you. Thank you so much, and I think, Bob, before you end your, your report, um, there are a couple directors that want to speak to um, Paula's service. So, Director Duffy. Thank you, Madam President. Six years ago, I joined the BART Board. I had been in city government for 25 years, and I knew a lot. And like you, I slept with a phone under my pillow during my city years but I had a lot to learn and you sought me out and you helped me tremendously. And seeing someone like you in a leadership role in the agency made me feel like I came to the right place. And uh, I earlier this week, I had the opportunity to go to the White House and to take my son to see uh, President Biden sign the Respect for Marriage Act. And there were over 5,000 people there on the lawn and I know that you would know many of them. I knew many of them, many from the Bay Area here, and uh, got to hug and take a picture with Kamala Harris, our vice president, which my son didn't even believe she knew me, so that was kind of <laughs> that was kind of a validation. But I say that to say that um, you're part of a continuum 
uh, over the past two generations, which has really changed how our country sees people who are LGBT. And um, your professionalism, your warmth, your ability to get things done. Um, you know, if, if I've had any success out in the field, it's really you and Greg Lombardi and our police department that have really shepherded me every step of the way to understand what's possible, what we should be able to do, but it's not possible, and um, how things get done on BART time. I've learned to be much more patient <laughs> than I think I ever could have been. Uh, you and I share a love for Provincetown, and I'm really hoping Provincetown's at the tip of the Cape of Massachusetts, and it is a gay sanctuary that was a Portuguese fishing village. And before that, it's where the pilgrims came. And they actually, all of you think that pilgrims went to Plymouth Rock, but they went to Provincetown, and then they heard it was going to be gay in 300 years, and they left. And so, <laughs> but you and I will have a great time, and that's something I appreciate is that you did such incredible work for BART and really made things happen, but I never wondered that you weren't having a great time in life with all your friends and loves and things of that sort. So this is my Valentine. I love you very much and thank you for all you've done. Thank you. Director Simon? I saw um, just a few days ago, Alicia's team um, put out the announcement to the world that you were leaving and I was like, oh my goodness. And the first thing I thought of Ms. Frazier were your 1,000 keys. <laughs> and folks who know Paula Frazier and who ride our system, you'll randomly get off to go to the movies in Daly City and you'll see Ms. Frazier talking to young people who work for BART as station agents or the system service folks, and she has the largest keychain that you will ever see. And really, that is what that symbolizes to me, I always think of you when I see someone with huge key ring. You know the system in and out, and you've been able to open doors for a lot of folks. You're always smiling. What was really amazing to me in my time here at BART in watching you and your leadership was when BART, as other transit agencies around the country were struggling for PPE, how you and our general manager took a no-holds-barred BART approach, and you were literally passing out um, masks at Civic Center BART station one day to, this is early, right about a week and a half after the shutdown. And, just to see how much the employees in the field love you, how you are auntie, you are mom, you are the trainer, you are the, the person who goes to the funerals and the baby showers. Um, it's important that we recognize and take a minute to just love on you. And so thank you, general manager, um, and, and thank you, Paul, for sticking it out. There was no work at home for you um, during the deep days of the pandemic, and folks were frustrated in the field. And you really worked so hard, especially with the young folks who we know are employees who really struggled. And they love you for it. And you kept a lot of folks from, from leaving. You encouraged them to work harder and that this is about service. Um, you're a prime example of what it means to dedicate your life to something bigger than yourself. We're going to miss you. And I don't know who you turn those keys into, but there's a lot of keys to sort out. There's a lot of doors, honestly, that you've opened. And we're so thankful. I'm so thankful for watching your leadership and your love and your caring spirit. You can see it. It exudes. It's everywhere. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Vice President Lee? Yep. Uh, thank you. I, I am one of those people who was not born in 1980 when you began a <laughs> Um, so you 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 have so many years uh, of experience here, um, but I, I just want to share a, a couple stories about how how I've gotten to know you, um, and and why I respect you and why we will miss you so so much here uh, at Bart. But I remember when I first was making a decision to run, I really ended up talking to the the San Francisco board directors at that time, including Joseph Woods and certainly my fellow directors, Dufty and Simon here. And what actually really made me want to join BART and run for this office was how enthusiastically and how effusive, especially Latifah and Bevan spoke of the staff here at BART and how amazing and how highly they spoke of the, the incredible characters here and then I remember making a decision to run, and what, you were one of the first folks I ran into as campaigning, of, of course, with Director Dufty at Glen Park, and you come out, and 
you know, Bevan's like, oh my gosh, Paula, like, oh, Janice, you got me, this is And, you know, when Bevan's like, you got to meet someone, like, you got to meet them, right? Like, that's just, everyone in this room, everyone's like, you know how it is. Um, and I, I remember that I won, and you joined at my uh, reception afterwards, and I will always cherish the chrome rail spike, and I, I appreciate that. I will always have something to remember why BART is where it is today. It's because of you, Paula, um, and how much you've given to BART. And you know, when we talk about what it takes to keep this system running day in and day out, it's because we have you, Paula, and, and so many folks like you at the district, but, but because of you, Paula. Um, and, and the last thing I want to say, um, it's sort of an odd time to be a queer person at BART, right? Like, <laughs> you've got Rebecca and me as president and VP. Um, but I, I truly think that folks like Rebecca and me can be out and running for office and on the board and, you know, be, be who we are because you were just paying for, you know, BART's participation in the Pride Parade back in 1995. And that BART has been, for whatever reason, a leader uh, in the LGBTQ community, we, we've set the standard for public agencies to, to celebrate uh, queer culture. Um, and again, like we wouldn't be here where we are as a district if it weren't for you, Paula. So thank you so much for your decades of leadership and bringing us to where we are today and we are so much better for it. Thank you. Uh, Director Rayburn. Paula, thank you. You represent the workplace culture at BART, and you have led with an attitude that is can do. There's no such thing as no to Paula Frazier. It's to bring together not just your department, but I've seen marching through Powell Street Station with you a number of years ago. Everyone from Matt Burroughs, police chiefs, all the staff on deck, site inspections. You believe in how to get things done. I also think that you embody and something that didn't exist, and it's been illustrated a few times already, but there's no glass ceiling here at BART. And the workforce can start and keep rising. But it does take the dedication that Paula brought. And that dedication extends not just through the workforce, but our customers. Paula reminded me, keep those templates, those letters that she would write. And they're not dated. She writes letters on a regular basis to explain to passengers, here's what we're doing. To explain to directors, here's what we're doing. That is called responsiveness. Paula, you are beloved. Thank you. Director Foley. Thank you, Madam President. Congratulations, Paula. Um, 42 years, you have given your life, your life as a, as a public servant to BART. And I, I can only simply say on behalf of myself and the workers and BART, thank you. You, you have committed your, your adult life to the success of this agency. And that is a big deal nowadays um, for someone to really put, go all in to BART and you did. And so, uh, I simply want to say thank you for your leadership, for your vision, for your mentorship, um, but really just thank you for the experience you brought to us every day. Um, and I just wish you a long, happy, and healthy retirement, um, that your next chapter be one that's uh, more exciting than Bart. Um, and I wish you well. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Um, really appreciate all the comments and, and won't repeat them, but just want to associate myself with them and just want to say, you know, Vice President Lee said, you know, for some reason, Bart has been this leader 
in the LGBT movement, but it's not for some reason. It's really for what Paula and some of her colleagues did decades ago. Um, I was lucky enough to serve on a panel with Paula several years ago during Pride Month. Um, and I got to learn some of the history and how it was not easy. It was it was a battle at the beginning, um, and there were just you know a handful of out employees and how they they worked to create the space to get acknowledged, to get the rights, um, and to get equality. And so, just so want to appreciate your work on that front, and of course everything you've done for Bart Riders. So thank you so much. We'll we'll all miss you. Oh, and I see uh, Director Allen is in the queue. So go ahead, Director Allen. Thank you. And so much has been said, I won't repeat it all, but I, I stand with uh, my colleagues in, um, in, in their thanks to you, Paula. Um, 42 years, wow, um, thank you. And thank you for your commitment and your love of BART and everyone in BART. Uh, and I'm, I just want to wish you a terrific rest of your life in retirement and uh, go ahead and sleep in for a while, okay? Well, thank you so much. Um, and with that, I assume, Bob, you have more of a report so we can we can move on. That concludes my uh, report. May I? Oh, uh, I've been oh trying sorry, to go ahead. I can't figure out how to do it. Uh, okay, go ahead, me? John. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I have to agree with everything that's been said. I've got one thing to uh, add to all of the above, and that is that when I was in the safety department and we ended up working in UNOCC, uh, I would go to these um, drills, Transbay 2 drills at uh, ODARC 30, and have my focus on all the, the, the nuts and bolts of everything that had to be done, and then you would turn around and all of a sudden I'd forget all of the above and my whole day, my whole night really would just brighten up and I'd have a chance to go over and give you a hug and we'd just exchange a few words. And then all of a sudden, uh, what was otherwise gonna end up being hard work became fun. And thanks to you and our friendship all these years. Um, I am really gonna miss you a great deal. And I wish I was there to give you a hug right now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have any public comments on the general manager's report? Yes, no speaker cards, but I see one hand raised. Okay. Alita, please go ahead. Um, thank you again, um, President Rebecca Saltzman and members. Uh, Alita Dupree for the record, my pronouns are she and her. Uh, this is very meaningful and important. And, and I, I feel the need to speak. Um, I, I don't know if I've never, ever met Paula. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it was at the Powell Street Adventure in 2017, or um, maybe just at some time in the boardroom. Um, I, I, don't, I don't remember uh, because I just meet so many people. Um, I, I'm the one that wears a skirt and sometimes wears a Raider t-shirt. Uh, hope that jogs a memory. But uh, 42 years, uh, the way I frame it is that in, 19, in the fall of 1980, uh, I visited a legendary and historic railroad station in New York City called Grand Central Terminal. So that's how I can frame 42 years. Uh, but the things that are said uh, certainly strike me positively that we do have somebody in BART who cares about people. I'm thinking about Hugh Carey, who said, I would like to be remembered as a person who cared a great deal about people. And so I, I think certainly uh, Paula personifies these words of uh, Hugh Carey. And, um, but Paula was about helping to make this system run and doing lots of different things that kind of reminds me of my career in air cargo where i had like seven different types of jobs in air cargo and it's this broad perspective of being able to operate the system both at the uh 30, foot level and on the ground uh much like airplanes and uh i hope that 
these ideals that Paula has espoused will, will, will spread uh, throughout BART. Um, and uh, all I can say is, uh, what would be a fitting thing uh, for Paula in retirement? Um, how about a trip to New York City and see Grand Central Terminal? And think about when I was there in 1980 and uh, going to the oyster bar and having uh, raw oysters and uh, asking questions at the information booth and then getting on a train. Uh, I, I think uh, Paula has certainly helped to bring some of that uh, into BART. So lastly, I'll say this, I'm gonna take some liberty here. I am impressed to believe that Paula is the personification of BART being the people system. Thank you. Thanks so much, Alina. Okay, next we'll move on to general public comment. This is for items that are not on today's agenda. Do we have any general public comment? I didn't receive any speaker cards, but I have one hand raised on Zoom. Okay. Alita, please go ahead. Uh, thanks again, uh, President Rebecca Saltzman. Uh, Alita Dupree, the record she and her. I, I wish I was in the Bay Area <clears throat> today. Um, I'm coming back. I hope you all have a good party because I know that not only uh, do you have a good meeting, but you have a good party. So I hope you enjoy that uh, as we go into the holiday season. Um, as I talk about general things, uh, I have been using the airport connector much. About a week and a half ago on a Sunday, the airport connector went out. And uh, I took the bus and it was fine. And two travelers took the bus with me. And it's good that you communicate the airport connector was out, but there wasn't any communication that the airport connector was turned back on. And so when I got on the bus, they let us on and they were like, well, we heard it. airport connector got turned back on. So I still got to ride the bus for free, the bus bridge, but uh, I, I think we have to have follow up with our communications that when, not just when something happens that we have to, tell people about, but also when the problem is resolved. So that way we know we can get back on BART. And so maybe I'll get back on the airport connector this time. Uh, I gotta admit, it didn't really excite me. Uh, I really like the people movers in Las Vegas at the airport, Harry Reid International Airport. I wish we had something like that, but uh, maybe someday in the future. But how uh, do we continue our work of building BART to be safest, most reliable, and most equitable system. And, and sometimes I talk about hard things, but it's important to enlighten those. There's 3,000 people with BART uh, that uh, we all need to learn about how do we practice equity, welcome, and inclusion. And uh, when, I, when I hear about uh, track intrusions, I mean, we should break that down. How often are people being pushed to the track? Uh, how, how often are people riding on tops of BART trains? Does this happen? It happens in New York. It's, it's not okay. Um, I would like to continue to see a BART that, that will be more uh, engaging and a BART that's more approachable where I can ask questions. You know, uh, I'm reaching out and I'm asking a BART, does BART have an airplane? Uh, I'd like to know if BART has an airplane. Uh, lots of organizations have airplanes. Uh, maybe when I come in person, I can ask somebody if BART has an airplane. I know you can't answer in a public meeting due to the Brown Act, uh, but I'd like to know if BART has an airplane or a private rail car and about travel policies, first class versus economy flights, things like that. Uh, because, because the public should know. Uh, because BART is indeed the people system, and I look forward to being back on the system soon. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have further public comment? I don't see any additional hands raised. Okay, then we'll move on. Um, we do not have any regular committee items today, so we will move on to board matters and we will take items A, B, and C together. So if directors have any reports or RCIs or in memoriam, um, please uh, raise your hand. Uh, Director Rayburn. Thank you, President Salzman. On December 7th, the South Hayward Joint Powers uh, Access 
board met. It's Hayward and Bart, Director Ames, and I represented Bart on the committee at this meeting. And our goal, as this board's well aware, we disbanded the committee because it's not necessary any longer. There were some revenues, however, that need to be distributed. And the committee made the decision to uh, allocate those revenues between Hayward and BART. And we wanted to not just allocate them, but combine them into one project that we can put them to good use toward. Several of the members, or actually the entire membership, agreed on that, as well as we would like to see improvements in access to the station. We would like to see uh, art created where art no, does not exist. And so I feel that, you know, this is a good ending, but there's one issue, and that's that both the access and the art kind of focus on something called the Union Pacific Railroad right-of-way. And we have this issue all up and down the line where we have pedestrians forced to go through subway tunnels uh, at this location that Union Pacific right-of-way could provide a separated grade access for students and passengers to walk over busy Tennyson Road to South Hayward Station. So that's the goal, is to see the access and also to paint the columns that hold up that Union Pacific Railroad. Uh, lines. So I've asked the general manager to work with me and other directors all up and down the line to see that the East Bay Greenway, that art, that all these things that everybody wants can occur without impediment from uh, what a group that should be our partner, the Union Pacific Railway. On a lighter note, I was in this room the other day with the UC Berkeley uh, planning students, masters planning students. We called it a studio on Link 21, both the financial as well as the actual design and development of the project. And I, I am so inspired by so many professionals that worked with these students. They weren't just going off to the library and doing their research. They were communicating with our planning staff, with our consulting planning staff, engineers, financial experts. They came in well-informed, and each team of five students just knocked it out of the park with tremendous deliveries. General Manager Powers was in the audience yeah, I think he even said something to the effect of, get your resumes ready. <laughs> they, were, they were that good. And so I look forward to seeing the finished reports. Uh, I think that they will help guide us. They didn't identify how we will resolve our uh, operating revenue over the next uh, few years, but they certainly pointed the direction toward the inequity that transit faces in the allocation of both state and federal dollars that a disproportionate amount of those funds go to highways. That's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President Lee. Um, yes, thank you. A uh, bunch of things happened last Friday um, that I was joined um, with by BART staff, um, including the Northern California Carpenters Union Moose Feed Luncheon, uh, where I got to meet a bunch of folks in OCR, which was great, and GM Powers, you were there as well. 
Um, and then that was followed by a conversation that we had with a roundtable of folks in San Francisco, really to talk about further collaboration between BART, um, particularly BART PD, SFPD, SF Fire Department, Department of Homelessness, Department of all of the things, um, and the mayor's office uh, about how we can ensure that our system, particularly at SFO, remains safe. And I just really want to thank um, Chief Alvarez and uh, DC Franklin for being at that meeting. And certainly, we were joined by Director Dufty. And, um, to, to, and I thought it was really collaborative. And I thought there were some good next steps coming out of that. Um, and in the evening, I went to a seamless event. I also want to highlight this past Monday, I pre presented to San Francisco's Youth Commission's Housing and Land Use Committee. Um, I was joined there by Molly Burke from our GCR team and want to thank um, Alicia and Pam in particular for, for helping prep for that meeting. Um, I, I love the SF Youth Commission. They have always been hyper-focused on how to increase accessibility um, for everyone, but particularly for youth with transit. And we, we came out of there with a lot of good ideas about how we can increase um, knowledge of our youth clipper card where folks get a 50% discount um, because that only makes up about 2% of our ridership. So really good conversation there. And because uh, last, lastly, uh, because it's the last meeting of the year, I just want to say that um, it's been an incredible year again here at BART. We ended the year on a high with more holiday sweaters coming out. I think that's really what the riders are asking for. Um, but uh, mostly, I think it's great that we can all be here in person together and that these board meetings have returned in person um, so they can see all your faces and um, you know be reminded that we are all in this together in moving BART forward. And I can't say enough thanks to what really you all as staff do. Um, we just sit up here and we like yell at each other and vote on things. But you are all actually running the system. You're actually dealing with the poop in the system. You're actually dealing with, you know, whether it's too hot or too cold or too wet on the rails and everything that comes with our service. So um, seriously, thank you so much. Thank you. Director Simon. Sure. Um, I guess it's been about a week and a half since uh, Alex uh, from the government relations uh, team, Alice Walker and uh, Director Dufty and I um, schlepped up to Sacramento on uh, Inauguration Day. Well, it's not Inauguration, Swearing in Day. Is it Swearing in Day? Swearing in Day. Swearing in Day for the state legislature, both <laughs> the Assembly and the Senate. I got to tell you, we began our first meeting at 10 o'clock um, with Senator, uh, with, with many folks in the delegation, um, but we, one of the things that came from that trip, I think we had about 12 meetings within uh, less than 10 hours. And Alex on the government relations team is a deep gym. We have a huge task next year, this board, how we use our time um, and, and, and how we use our talents and relationships. And much of that time um, may need to be in Sacramento and in Washington, D.C., telling the story that we told last week in all of those meetings, starting with Senator Weiner, about the fiscal cliff, and really educating folks, both from the Bay Area delegation and even folks um, from Southern California who will be on transportation and who have a deep understanding, not only about the importance of public transportation, but about the protection of our climate. Um, the doors were open to us with every single door we knocked on. We got seat time, and I, I can't tell you how open um, staff and the electeds were to hear from us in the new year. They want one-on-ones. Um, Director Dufty and I um, have very, very close relationships um, with folks in the building, and it was amazing to see Alex also make his magic, having worked for um, Assemblymember Ting um, for quite some time. So I just definitely want to encourage us to do a lot more in January and in February, and as uh, both Nancy Skinner, Senator Skinner, and Assembly Member uh, Ting begin their process in leading this next budget cycle. They were very clear, as was Senator Weeder, that BART is at um, top of line for them. And um, I'm just very, very thankful for staff being able to move um, a lot of a lot of things around to make sure that we were um, very, very present in the building um, that day. And um, can't wait to do a lot more. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Director Ames. 
Thank you. Uh, yes, I attended on December 7th uh, with Director Rayburn uh, the South Hayward Bar JPA board meeting, which was our last meeting. Um, but uh, the Hayward City Council members that were at in attendance uh, did suggest, and we agreed to meet more regularly, quarterly, with this infrastructure uh, committee that I believe Hayward is formulating and trying to figure out improvements citywide. Um, but as it relates to BART, I think we're going to be instrumental in trying to improve access to the downtown um, Hayward Station and the South Hayward Station. So that was a great meeting, and I look forward to collaborating with Hayward and Director Rayburn. And actually, Director McPartland also represents Hayward now with the redistricting. So we have three directors now. So this is a good sign uh, for the future. And then December 9th, um, BART, uh, ho the uh, Hayward Maintenance Facility at BART, um, hosted an event with Mission Valley ROP. And this is a trade school for high schoolers and they're learning how to weld. They know they, they're learning how to do auto body, kind of automotive work, uh, welding. So they were invited to HMC to look at the potential jobs for the future. And it was really exciting. I wish I could have stayed there for four hours. And I want to thank, you know, the staff there. Um, there was so much, uh, the BART staff were, you know, public affairs, uh, external affairs, and a lot of the folks at HMC, which I should have a list here, I'm so sorry, but it could go on and on. It was just such a great event, interviewing the people on the uh, in the field. You know, they were on the line there, you know, doing, you know, they had welding operations, they were fixing HVAC um, equipment at the, at the, for the cars, and it was just inspiring, and it was a really detailed tour, so I'm hopeful um, I just want to do a shout out to Alaric because he, you know, also uh, was instrumental in getting this meeting together. And I'm just looking forward to our new workforce, which, you know, as we can see, we have a, a retirement today. And and I look forward to seeing these uh, new folks coming into our system as potential employees. But that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Director Allen. Thank you, President Saltzman. Uh, I, I, I was, you know, I was really pleased to see the the nice tributes that were given to Paula Frazier today, uh, in honor of her retirement. Uh, but I am a bit disappointed that another retirement was not mentioned. Um, as of last Friday, uh, Master Police Officer Keith Garcia officially retired. And he is also known as the uh, president of the, the BART Police Officers Association. Uh, he retires after a 30 year career. And uh, I, I know I have had many occasions to work closely with Keith on police policy and, and things that go on in our BART system. Uh, and I, um, he, I, I just have to say he's gonna be very much missed by this director. And um, I also want to extend my congratulations to Officer Shane Reese, who now takes over as the president of the BART Police Officers Association. Thank you. Thank you. Director Duffy. Thank you, Madam President. And I was unaware of Mr. Garcia's um, retirement, and I saw a lot of faces here kind of look um, uncertain about it. So um, certainly I know that um, at a future meeting that we will, uh, let me defer to the Deputy General Manager. Thank good, you. Good morning. Happy holidays, uh, the Board Director Dufty. Uh, Mr. Garcia made it very clear that he didn't want any fanfare. The Chief can uh, confirm that or not, but we certainly uh, love Keith. We're sad to see him go, but he wanted to ride out into the sunset on his own. So. And I guess he and I didn't agree all the time, so I guess I would have overridden that. But, but I, I do appreciate that you respected that. And um, certainly we want to, it's a very important role. And um, Keith played an important role in ensuring that we were compensating um, our officers and our laterals uh, in a manner that would help us not be in the situation that many police departments have been in around the Bay Area because of the high cost of living and the competition and things of that sort. And so whether we always agreed or not, I knew that he had the best interests of the men and women of his department. And so I do appreciate that Director Allen um, shared that with us. 
Uh, let me briefly just thank both um, Vice President Lee and Director Simon for um, outlining um, uh, meetings and, and, and visits that, that we had. And um, I simply want to say that the meeting with the city and county of San Francisco uh, was very satisfying because we've been out here on our own really working hard with our police department and our fair inspectors and uh, crisis intervention specialists and our ambassadors to make a difference and to not just let people languish who are um, sick, who are unhoused, who are facing um, terrible challenges. And I think that we have really risen um, with the Progressive Police uh, Department and the leadership and the new leadership that has come in. And so um, I do think that the mayor has taken note uh, based on her recent visits to the opening of Powell Street Station and just what she's hearing that people are saying that BART is doing the work and contributing to the best of our ability. And so I do appreciate that the mayor has taken note. I think that that has translated to our airport director, um, Ivar Sartero, and also to uh, Chief Bill Scott of the San Francisco Police Department. And so I, I would say six years in, here we are that it, it sometimes takes a while to get the recognition, and I'm hoping that as the city looks to its strategy, uh, that, that we will be the beneficiary and see the resources and see the exits to housing and treatment that we've been asking for for this entire time. Uh, I think it is the most important thing that our riders are looking to see. They're looking to see us try and make a difference and to feel that they're safe and that they can ride the system uh, on any day, at any time of day. And I really want to thank all of, of, of the department uh, and, and how conscientious and compassionate I think that, that the BART Police Department has been to try and address what is what a situation that I think has caused uh, most people in the Bay Area to kind of give up on local government. They just don't think that we understand it. They don't think that we have a solution for it, and they're deeply frustrated. But I do think that our riders see that we're trying to make a difference, uh, and I just really want to, in, in the spirit of what Director Lee shared and thanking, I, I want to thank, um, it, it all comes, it all flows from the top, so I want to thank our general manager and deputy general manager and chief of police, and then I just want to thank uh, everyone at this agency who I think truly are compassionate and want to see us be successful in, in making our system the best that it possibly uh, can be. And I do want to say that um, there is nothing in life like walk, walking the hallways of uh, the state legislative building with Latifa Simon. Uh, it is just fun and um, and we had a great time and I think it is really important that all of us on this board have relationships in Sacramento and this is the year that we should be there. There is going to be an effort for funding measures, uh, statewide possibly, a Bay Area funding measure, all of these things are in the world of the possible, but I think that because we have the privilege of being elected by the public, we have a higher calling than um, you know individuals that that may have been appointed to a role. You know, the people have asked us to 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 lead, and I think that we can only do that by being a resource and being consistent in in the work similar to what we did with the San Francisco County Transportation Authority and Prop L and a 71% passage of a measure while three companion measures in other parts of California all lost, even a measure in the Sacramento area that only required a 50% vote, not the 66.7% that we were required with, could not get their measure to pass. And I want to say that really speaks to the excellence of our uh, government affairs people and absolutely uh, Priya Mather and Pam Harehold and all of her team. So um, as we celebrate this holiday, I think uh, for me, it's a rededication to the things that we are going to do um, in, in the new year. Uh, briefly, I would like to submit an in memoriam to adjourn today's meeting in the name of Peter Gable. Peter was a legal scholar and taught for 30 years at the New College California School of Law. He taught at Bolt Hall, but um, Peter Gable was really a community builder, and I came to know him uh, really in my first year on the Board of Supervisors 20 years ago when um, uh, there was a grocery store, a large grocery store in Noy Valley on 24th Street called Real Foods, and the employees started to organize in 
uh, August of 2003, and without any notice, the store was shut in an effort to prevent uh, a unionization movement, and that led to years of uh, over a dozen years that this store was closed and really dragged down the Noe Valley neighborhood. And Peter organized community meetings. And I couldn't believe that 400 people would turn out uh, to talk about a grocery store because it was such an important anchor. And um, ultimately, uh, we were able to get um, a Whole Foods to come into the, to that neighborhood and to bring back the vitality and the strength of it. But I really admired Peter greatly uh, with his long, uh, long, long hair, you know, his 60s style. And uh, I want to um, express my sadness to his son, Samuel, and to his life partner, Lisa Jakes, who was a leader of Local 2 Unite here in San Francisco. And so Peter will be greatly missed. Thank you all. Thank you. Director Foley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I also wish to um, congratulate Keith Garcia on his retirement and uh, congratulate Shane Reese on his uh, promotion, if you will, to, to president of the BART PPOA. Um, it is a heavy lift, so uh, Shane, we should talk. Um, one item to report, and that is on December 8th, uh, Director Allen and myself attended the uh, Pleasant Hill BART Station Leasing Authority JPA meeting. Um, and we had really one item of interest, which I cannot get into the details of because it was closed session, but it's regarding the status of the one undeveloped area of the Pleasant Hill Station, which is Block D. And so uh, stay tuned for a future item from the uh, BART, uh, Pleasant Hill BART Leasing Authority JPA. And with that, I turn it back to you. Thank you. And Director McPartland, do you have uh, anything to report? I'm guessing that's a no. So we will move on in the agenda to no, item D. Uh, oh, so go uh, ahead, no, I don't Director have... McPartland. Yes, no, uh, I'm out of state right now uh, on uh, 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 medical issues uh, with a family member. So no, I have nothing to report. Thank you. So we'll now move on to item D, election of officers. Um, and before we take nominations for board president, I just wanted to reflect on 2022 um, and thank staff for writing these comments for me. I, I just have to say, you know, I happen to be board president this year and it really has been an honor, but all of these accomplishments are group accomplishments, mostly staff work, but also board policies. So we should all be proud of what we've accomplished this year. Um, this year really was focused on welcoming back BART riders and supporting our employees. And I can really say that BART is now focused, more focused on customer experience than ever before. We're trying new things. Um, staff are saying yes whenever they can, and we're exploring new ways to improve service reliability and grow ridership. In 2022, BART frontline staff worked tirelessly to put out clean and safe service during many extraordinary challenges. Um, in February, we returned to midnight service on Sundays, which was the last piece of service restoration following the pandemic. And then in September, we ended Sunday single tracking and locked in five line service seven days a week for the first time in history, which is so huge. I no longer plan my weekend BART trips around Saturdays because Sundays are just as convenient. It's really fantastic for riders who want to get around on the weekend. And very soon, I, I didn't know this until I read this, in just two and a half weeks, we're going to end evening single tracking through the Transbay tube as the earthquake retrofit winds down. Um, this work was unfortunately very disruptive. Um, I got caught in it the other night, uh, but our tube is stronger than ever. It was really important to do, and I'm thrilled that our late night riders will have better evening service starting in January. So there are still more service improvements coming. Um, we've been adapting to the new normal, and even while facing an existential crisis, we accomplished so many things. Uh, maybe the most exciting thing is that we celebrated our 50th anniversary in September um, with kind of a, a BART reunion with our 
employees, riders, and the public. Um, it was a tremendous month with an amazing event at the Lake Merritt Station Plaza that brought joy to many. Um, and we really set the bar high for how to celebrate a momentous occasion. Um, and I'm glad so many folks here could, could make it to that. We made great progress in replacing our aging fleet of train cars. Um, we resumed accepting new train cars in February, and we are now running more fleet of the future cars than legacy cars, which is a huge improvement and riders are noticing it. We finished a multi-year modernization projects that transformed Powell Street and 19th Street stations joining El Cerrito del Norte, which was completed last year. I am thrilled that we finally reopened underground restrooms at Pell, 19th Street, Lake Merritt, and Montgomery. This is something I'd been working on for many, many years. Um, and again, you know, the, this current BART management and employees are ready to figure out how to say yes, and that differs from the past at BART, and I'm, I'm really proud of that. Um, and reopening the restrooms has really made it easier for people to take transit. Um, and to deal with things that happen when there are delays, a misconnection, it's really nice to know that there's going to be a restroom there at 19th Street and people can use it. We now have six brand new escalators in downtown San Francisco with more underway. Um, they're under warranty and they're going to improve reliability quite a bit. We helped launch Clipper Bay Pass, a prepaid all-you-can-ride transit pass, and I'm so excited about this pilot program because it's a big step forward in our fare integration efforts and a great example how we're working with the MTC and other transit agencies to improve coordination. Um, and, and really, Bob gets a lot of credit for this, his leadership amongst other transit agencies and with um, MTC has helped us get so far um, in making the transit systems work better together. Our groundbreaking Progressive Policing Bureau continues to make impactful changes in our system, and so many transit agencies across the US are now following our model of using transit ambassadors, citing BART as their inspiration. We advanced our transit-oriented development activities, including opening phase one of the Walnut Creek TOD with 358 units occupied. The veterans housing at our Millbrae TOD has 79 units occupied, and the board approved a lease option for the first 457 homes at Lake Merritt, and the developer team received final approvals for the senior affordable housing phase. And of course, uh, just at our last meeting, the board selected the developer team for the North Berkeley TOD. We at BART are really helping to address the Bay Area's housing crisis. We continued to take a leadership role in advocating for operating funds. Um, and thank you to directors uh, Simon and Dufty for going up to Sacramento. I think you're right. We're gonna all have to continue to do a lot more of that. And of course, our staff has been really strategic and nimble with our budget planning. Um, I know that that hasn't been an easy feat as things change again and again. The Measure R Rebuilding Program is ahead of schedule with more than 40% of all work complete. And that includes the replacement this year of a major trackway interlocking between the South Hayward and Union City stations. And looking forward, our Link 21 program is making its exciting moves. We marked a major milestone earlier this year by transitioning into the next phase of the program where we identify possible Link 21 projects, including a new underground trans train crossing of the San Francisco Bay. We also launched an equity advisory council consisting of 18 community members around the Northern California mega region who will provide input to help advance equity through the program's development and implementation. And we ratified new collective bargaining agreements in July to support our workers during record rates of inflation. And looking to what we do in the boardroom, we opened this brand new boardroom and finally got to actually be inside of it. Um, and we made the technology changes to continue to allow virtual public comment moving forward um, far into the future. Um, and the other thing we did with our board meetings is we had meetings out in the system 
one at Del Norte and that huge meeting at the Hayward Maintenance Complex. It might have been the biggest BART board meeting attendance ever. First time we'd ever opened a maintenance facility to the public. Um, so that was fantastic. And I look forward to seeing uh, what our next president does without us in the system next year. Um, we accomplished all of this and more in partnership with our labor leaders and getting through the next several years and overcoming our fiscal cliff will require a great deal of teamwork, trust, and transparency. I know we are up for the challenge. The public relies on BART and our 50th anniversary showcased the Bay Area's love for BART. I wanna thank everyone for their con contributions in serving the region proudly this year. So at this time, we are going to open nominations for board president, and I'd actually like to make a nomination um, to nominate Vice President Lee to be the next board president. Um, VP Lee has been with me all the way this year. You know, we're in the meetings together with Bob and Michael planning these meetings. Um, she has really been a leader on all of our key issues, and I know that she is ready to take on the challenges next year. Um, I'm counting on her to bring in a whole lot more funding for BART, <laughs> um, but I think, I think she's up to the challenge and I'm looking forward to her leadership. Um, are there any other nominations? And if not, does the nomination need a second? Second. A second, um, and we will close nominations. I, I thought we just needed the second for the motion. So is there, there a motion to elect the board president? <laughs> Oh, well, I'll make the motion <laughs> and you can make the second. Um, and now we will, oh, sorry, is there any public comment? We haven't received any speaker cards, but one hand raised. Okay, go ahead. Alita, please go ahead. Um, thanks again, uh, President Rebecca Saltzman and members. Uh, Alita Dupree for the record, she and her. Uh, I was a bit on pins and needles waiting for your answer. Uh, but I am appreciative of the answer that you have just given in uh, your nomination of uh, Janice Lee to be the new president of the Clark Board of Directors. Um, I think I'll condense this and my vice presidential comments together. I don't know that I need to speak twice. Uh, but... Uh, in looking at the resume of all the good things that were just mentioned, I impress very strongly upon our new um, vice president, our new presidential candidate, uh, to look forward and consider that there are a lot of hard issues that have to be um, addressed. Uh, hard issues uh, such as uh, system safety. Uh, we don't hear about uh, platform pushing and train surfing. Um, we don't hear much about uh, different kinds of people and whether they are treated equitably in the daily course of the operations of this system. I do ask that the focus now or our new candidate, Janice Lee, would be on using this position as an opportunity uh, for service to even more deeply serve uh, the people of the, the Bay Area, uh, to uphold uh, the good name of BART, uh, to help build BART to be uh, a destination in and of itself. Uh, to, to be reverent and mindful of tradition and history, and hopefully to, to stand with the idea of not just having a BART that runs, and I mean, having a BART that runs and works is a good thing, but I often talk about ideals that are legendary and stately, because you can never have enough Grand Central Terminal. And, and yes, um, uh, Director Lee has told me that she actually has been to see Grand Central Terminal. So we both have that common item in our resume. I hope that all of you will have consensus, 
hopefully unanimity, unanimity in voting for both your vice president and president uh, together in this process, because we have to work together and not be divided. I asked of Janice to always remember and practice the idea that BART is truly the people system. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any further public comment? I don't see any additional hands raised. Okay. Um, then let's go to the vote. Director Foley? Aye. Vice President Lee? Yes. Director McPartland? Aye. Director Rayburn? Yay. Director Simon? Director Allen? Yes. Director Ames? Yes. Director Dufty? Yes. President Zaltzman? Yes. Yay. Thank you. The motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. And I will now hand over the gavel that I've never used to our new president, Janice Lee. Thank you. Um, would it be possible if I said maybe a minute or two of things? Oh, should I do that? Okay, I'm gonna do, say a couple things first. Um, first, I really have to give many, many thanks to Director Saltzman, <laughs> Rebecca, um, I, I don't think that there's been anyone else really in the transit world that I felt such policy alignment with, like genuinely. Um, and I think that has helped me, you know, on this board and in this role in many, many ways. Rebecca, you've been such a mentor to me. And certainly as you've been present over last year and I've been VP, you have really showed me like how to get things done within BART um, and how you lead as president. And for that, I am so uh, indebted to you and the lessons that you have shown me. Um, I know that Rebecca loves transit and cares deeply, deeply about this system. I also know that Rebecca cares a lot about good governance and doing the right thing. Um, and, and there's a few lessons I, I do want to bring up that I've learned particularly first, it's really, really critical to have board leadership who will build relationships with senior management to get those things done. That, that litany of things, those are things I think we have general consensus on the board to move forward, but it takes someone like you, Rebecca, to, to keep at it, to keep pushing and figuring out how we can change the getting to yes versus the no, we can't do that for X, Y, Z kind of reasons. And, and you've always pushed and you've always worked really effectively, I think, really with GM Powers and DGM Jones and, and many, many others. And what I've learned is you really need that trust in those, you need to have the trust and you need to have the relationships. Um, otherwise, you're not going to be able to try, you're not going to be able to solve problems. Um, and without the trust, we wouldn't be able to hold you accountable, truthfully. That, that accountability disappears. So I, I've really learned that from you, Rebecca. And I think the other thing is in going through and remembering all of our high points of the past year, um, what I really appreciate so much is that you really are trying to make this work, what we do on the bar board and everything in this transit world, as accessible as possible for our riders and those who are impacted the most. The two things I'll point out, one is the, the Hayward maintenance complex visit. Um, and I know that you had pushed for it and I know that you knew how popular it was going to be and that it really took your leadership enthusiasm to, to bring that all together. And you could see how amazed the, the big transit fans, the foamers, to the everyday BART riders, to, to the folks who had some critiques, you know, of the district. It, it brought everyone together. And um, I, I think that, and I think it's your tenacity around TOD um, at North Berkeley and at Ashby BART and, and the amount of time you've put into those meetings to really make that work accessible and to show that you're going to show up for those communities. Um, I, I've learned so much. Um, so I just want to thank all of my fellow board directors. I did not expect a unanimous vote. So for that, I'm very, very grateful. And looking forward, I have three things in 2023 that I hope that we can all agree on that we will take forward into the next year. First, I really, you know, Alita, you said it, I, I want as much unity as we can on this board. We are running the same system. 
We are all, you know, in it for BART. And we actually agree on so, so, so much at the end of the day. And I don't want us to forget that. We are all pushing for the safest, the most reliable, the most convenient, the most well-run, the most, the, the, the system with the most integrity here. Um, there's no one on this board that feels otherwise, and I know that. The second is, I want to really make sure that our conduct next year um, really upholds the most respect for each other and most importantly to me, that we must respect staff, whether that's board appointed officers to, you know, the system service workers at the most ground level. Um, I want to make sure that we really hold each other accountable to that level of respect. And the last thing is, and I'm taking this really from you, Rebecca, the willingness to try and to push ourselves both individually and as a district to do more, to do better, to try something. Um, I think that has gotten us so far when we think about fares to opening bathrooms to TOD to how we can better serve our employees and our riders. Um, so I'm just asking you all for that willingness to try and push ourselves. With that, I would like to present <laughs> outgoing president <laughs> with a beautiful plaque. Thank there you. Yeah. All right. Now on to now on to the vote and nomination for vice president. Um, I would be lucky to serve with any of the individuals on this board as VP, but I will first open nominations, and with the nominations, I'll take those as motions. They're on my screen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, Director Dufty. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to nominate for Vice President Mark Foley. I think that Mark distinguished himself uh, in the second year of the pandemic as our board president at that time. And I think that the experience and work that he's done throughout his career on labor management relations, I think is really very relevant. And I think that there's some important decisions that we'll have in the coming year that I know that he will be part of. And I appreciate how Mark conducts himself, even in difficult times here, his graciousness and his thoughtfulness in how he approaches, whether it's staff or directors, is much, much appreciated. Thank you. I'd like to second. Um, so we have a nomination for Director Foley. I see that Director Allen, you'd like to make a motion? Yes. Um, first, you know, I want to just just talk a little bit about this process. Um, I my I, I would like to make a motion to that we elect uh, Director Ames as our next vice president of this board. Um, I mean, no disrespect to Director Foley and that nomination in, in making this uh, alternative nomination. But here's the reason uh, that I, I see that we should maybe do something different. Uh, over the last really um, 10, 11 years, there historically was a process in this board where the board leadership rotated between uh, three groups of directors, uh, the three groups being di districts one, two, and three, second group being four, five, and six, and the third group being seven, eight, and nine. And um, that, that trend continued. Uh, I went back as far as 2011. Um, that trend continued until 2020. Um, in 2019, we had Director Dufty serve as the president uh, from San Francisco, representing a San Francisco district. Uh, in 2020, we had Director Simon, who represented a portion of San Francisco. Um, those two directors are direct in District 7 and 9, part of that one group that is sort of considered the, the San Francisco group. 
Um, in 2021, we had Director Foley serve as president and now being nominated again uh, just two years later. Um, and in 2022, we had Director Saltzman, both of those directors representing districts uh, two and three, being part of that one, two, three group. Um, so really, and, and now we have Director Lee as president. Congratulations, Director Lee. Uh, and she, again, is from the San Francisco group. So in the last five years of, of board uh, leadership, we have had three directors from the San Francisco uh, representation, uh, along with two directors from Contra Costa slash, um, uh, actually District 3 covers part of Alameda and Contra Costa, and District 2 is Contra Costa only. So there has been really a, a true inequity on the part of Districts 4, 5, and 6 um, that uh, a director from one of those three districts has not served since 2018 when Director Rayburn was the president. Um, so now we are talking about, you know, as we elect a vice president, we are talking about potentially the person who would serve in 2024. Um, and to, um, to not, not nominate someone from districts four, five, and six would put us actually um, six years without representation from that arena. Um, and so for that reason, I, I do make the motion to nominate uh, Director Elizabeth Ames for the position of vice president. Director Allen, would you like to make that a motion as well? Yeah. That is so my motion. Subs so a substitute. There a second? That's right. So a second for that. I don't hear a second for. I'll second. Okay. I, I will second. All right. I Are there any? Oh, go ahead, Director Allen. Can I just say one other thing? I think it is important for us to rotate the leadership of this board. Um, while it may seem like someone who's never been the president before would be inexperienced, and maybe we don't want to take a risk on that and select someone who has been the president just two years, er uh, yeah, president two years earlier. Um, I think it's important for the development of all of the members of this board to rotate the leadership um, equally throughout um, people, especially uh, someone who has now been duly elected by the voters twice now, um, similar to the way we have now selected President Lee. Thank you. Thank you, Director Allen. So we have a motion and a substitute motion on the table. I want to see if there are any other nominations because we have room on the docket for one more substitute motion. Um, sure, yes. Um, so let's close nominations for now, um, and then we can take a, well, okay, sorry. I'm new at this, so please be patient. Um, what I would like to do is first go to the public speaker that we have online. We'll, we'll close the nominations for now, um, and then we'll take the public speaker, and then we'll do some board comments. I'll go to you first, Director Ames. I haven't received any speaker cards, but there is one hand raised on Zoom. Alita, please go ahead. Um, thank you, uh, new board president, Janice Lee. Uh, Alita Dupree, for the record, she and her. I changed my mind. I'm going to speak a bit. I, I think I'm going to speak in the neutral. Um, not going to take sides here. Uh, I have met Mark Foley. Uh, and we are, we are both uh, originally uh, from New York State. I, I have not yet personally met uh, Director Ames, hope to sometime soon. Uh, both have always uh, respected me as the person I am. I do want to impress as you go through this process of selecting a candidate for the position of VP. And I hope it doesn't turn ac acrimonious here, uh, is that no part of BART is an island. And as I write in many of my letters, you know, I'm still digesting uh, this idea of regional leadership. And I, it's going to take me a long time to think and understand it. But I ask that 
whoever takes on this position, among all of you to remember that in your leadership, it's not just about the people who cast votes for you. Uh, we have a worldwide constituency. Uh, I can say that people from 189 nations have tapped their contactless cards and phones on the Omni readers in the New York City subway. We too have a worldwide constituency. So as you go through this process, I ask you to remember this, that you select a candidate based not on regional issues necessarily, but on the fact that BART is a system of national and worldwide significance that has a, constitu that has a constituency that are much greater uh, than the boundaries of your district wards. So, so I look forward to you selecting a candidate and I'm comfortable with both though I admit that I do know Mark Foley more simply because I have visited with Mark Foley in person. I look forward to your answer soon. Thank you. Thank you, Alita. Um, so we'll now go to board comments. You can use your raise hand function or I'll just keep an eye on y'all. Um, but Director Ames. Well, thank you, um, Director Allen and Director McPartland. Um, this is an honor to be recommended as vice president. I'm completely caught off guard, frankly. <laughs> um, but I do see the unfairness of having certain folks representing the districts um, and regions where they're not being represented at all, all the time. And I, I am very passionate about um, addressing our fiscal cliff. I've brought this up several times. This is a, a monumentous uh, effort that's gonna take a complete collaboration um, on the board. And we may not always agree. I think we agree 90% of the time. This is what I said during the campaigning. Um, and I hope that whatever we decide uh, that we do focus on this fiscal cliff, uh, you know, obtain funding from the state and federal partners, but also reimagine a transit uh, in a way that we improve upon our ridership. I think this is key to getting any measure passed in the next several years. And if we don't build up our ridership through new ideas, as the president had mentioned, we need a lot of new ideas on building ridership, and I think this board can do it. So I appreciate the nomination and uh, very humbled by it. Thank you. Thank you, Director Ames. Would any other um, director like to speak? Yes. If not, oh, go ahead, Director Foley. Thank you, President Lee. Uh, I like the sound of that. Um, so you, we we have a challenge in front of us. This this board, this agency. Um, really, we are a leader in the nation for public transportation. And agencies look to us for guidance, for direction, um, through our general manager, Bob Powers, you know, kind of leading the way through the pandemic. Um, and I really do feel it's important for us to focus on the goal line, if you will, where we need to be in the next two or three years. Um, for me, it's pretty simple. It's really about the customer experience and all of the things that are tied to that. It is about riders wanting to come back to BART because it's convenient, it's reliable. It offers them a safe travel to work, to school, um, to be able to really get to where they need to be in their life. We have folks that are dependent on our system for their life. It's getting to the doctor. It's doing other things that are critically important for them. So I, I feel for us in our role, it really is to look at how do we expand those opportunities that we have? How do we identify critically needed funding for not just BART, but really it's, it's, a, it's a national issue. We need sustainable funding for transit. It isn't just the fiscal cliff. It's really what, what do you imagine transit can be or should be? How should it weave with our lives? How is it part of our everyday living? And I really think it's important for us to advocate for that, to be out in front with that, and to simply lead by example. We need to be the leaders in transit, and I'm looking forward to, to taking on my role as vice president in supporting 
President Lee and being able to move that forward. So I, I look forward to um, the thoughts from other colleagues, but I, I am truly honored, I am humbled um, to, to be nominated for Vice President, and I would really genuinely want to run with this position, and I, I really uh, thank you for your support. Thank you, Director Foley. Uh, Director Salzman. Um, I'd like to speak in support of Director Foley. Um, Director Foley, you know, former president, former president Latifah Simon, they really took us through the hardest parts of the pandemic um, and their leadership got us to where we are today. Um, and we're at another really critical point. And I think his leadership will be very important in the coming years. Um, and you know, I think it's time for us to just actually go back and formally change our board rules. I've been trying to change them. I think I started eight years ago trying to change that rule about the rotations because it's totally arbitrary. I mean, I was president and most of my district was in Alameda County, but, you know, I was supposedly a, the Contra Costa director. That's where I happen to live right now. But, you know, most of my constituents are in Alameda County, so it really has gone really from Alameda County to San Francisco to Contra Costa. So I think the groupings are arbitrary. But the other thing I wanted to say is um, Director Foley and also Vice President Lee have really looked at the whole system. They're not just looking at their own districts. And I think that's so important for all of us to do. It was, you know, I was surprised to see Director Foley on the Zoom for the North Berkeley BART, you know, developer candidate presentations. And he sat through the whole thing, you know, that is the type of director he is. He is invested in all of the projects throughout the system and I think wants to help uplift all of our districts. So I, I think where he happens to live and represent doesn't actually matter. All right, with that, I would like to go to the vote. So we're gonna take the substitute motion first. Excuse and me. that was, Excuse oh, me. sorry, Director um, Allen or McPartland. Yep. Go ahead, Director Thank McPartland. You. My buttons here uh, remotely aren't working very well. Um, I would have to, to go ahead and uh, point out that uh, when BART was originally established, it was an appointed board. And it, I don't know how many years it went uh, before it became an elected uh, position. However, it wasn't very long because the design of BART was to have representation for the different uh, viewpoints and the diversity throughout the entire district. Uh, and in that rotation that was originally set up, it had absolutely nothing to do with the personalities and how well people got along with one another and had everything to do with getting representation geographically for the public that we serve. And we have stepped away from that. Now, um, Director uh, Salzman's point is well taken in that she represents a particular uh, area that includes two counties. And because of uh, the Brown Act and or because of the voting regulations that we end up having, that's okay. I don't have a problem with that because when she is the president, then she ends up having uh, the basically the opportunity to more strongly represent the municipalities within her district. Now, if you end up taking a look at that responsibility, that it's supposed to be the public being heard and the public being able to, and the municipalities being able to be uh, represented evenly, uh, then I would say that San Francisco is disproportionately uh, heavy on representation. Now, over the years, we have developed a uh, disparity as far as opinions are concerned between the insiders and the outsiders, between the, the uh, uh, let's just say that we end up having the equivalent of uh, the diversity that we have at the national level. And it's not a personality contest for the people on the board. It should be getting equal representation for the, for the uh, citizens that we represent. And that has not occurred. And for that reason, uh, and that reason alone, because I have a great deal of respect for um, Director Foley, uh, I will be pat, uh, passing my vote uh, for Liz uh, Ames. Thank you, Director McPartland. All right, 
Director Duffy, Thank I am you. feeling very generous, but you have under a minute. Thank you. John, I, I just want to respond to you because three times in your remarks you used the, the phrase personality. Um, I can work with anyone. I've worked in government and politics for 46 years. But where we are with this agency is that there is a majority that are in the mainstream. That means supporting the drip. That means supporting the budget. It means supporting the building that we're in right now, which was fiscally the right thing to do. So I just want to say that I'm about the fact that there is a working majority on this board, and I feel that someone from that group is appropriate so that we're not having more battles over these issues, but we're moving this agency forward and achieving the things that we need to do to gain back our ridership. So it's not a personality question for me. Thank you. I would like to now move to the votes. Um, I think we, we've shared and heard enough. So I will take the substitute motion first, and that is the nomination of Director Liz Ames for Vice President. District Secretary, the vote. Director Foley? No. President Lee? No. Director McPartland? Aye. Director Rayburn? No. Director Simon? Director Saltzman? Yes. Director Allen? Yes. Director Ames? Yes. And I just want to clarify, may I? You don't you don't make comments in the middle of a vote. It, it's not it's not procedure. So there was an opportunity to speak. Well, I'm I sorry. thought there was some inaccuracies. I, I just want to there, point out a point it's of very order. small. I, I did support General the fund. Council. I did support the headquarters. Um, sorry, location General and Council. purchasing the building, and I did approve the two-year budget. I um, would like we, to. Okay, that's all I need to say. Thank you. <laughs> sorry. Um, all right. Um, the vote. No, I'm sorry, Director Ames. Could you? Your vote is. Sorry, uh, yes. Thank you. And Director Dufty. No. Okay. Thank you. Motion fails. We will now take the first motion, and that was nomination of Director Foley for VP. Director Secretary. Director Foley? Aye. President Lee? Yes. Director McPartland? Aye. Director Rayburn? Yay. Director Simon? Yes. Director Saltzman? Yes. Director Allen? No. Director Ames? It, yes. Director Dufty? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries with Director Allen voting no. I want to heartily congratulate congratulate my colleague, Mark Foley. And I'll hand you a floor for, for a moment. Thank you, President Lee. Um, thank you, colleagues, uh, to everyone who voted, uh, whether you were on one side or the other. Um, we are a team, and we need to work together to move this agency forward. So um, that was the vote from a few minutes ago, and it no longer matters. Um, so with that, I'll say I, I'm truly honored and humbled uh, to serve as vice president under, again, the leadership of, of President Lee. And again, I think our priorities are clear. Um, we need to focus on providing world-class customer experience at BART that really focuses on service reliability, equity, and really rider safety. And I think part of that is investing in our own future and identifying that sustainable funding that we need as an organization to be successful for the next 50 years. Um, and at the end of the day, it's about growing our ridership. And we will need to really look outside the box to do everything we can to maximize those non-commuters that could be using BART for everyday travel. And we need to leverage that. And with that, I'll say thank you for putting your faith in me. And uh, I look forward to the next year. Thank you. All right, so we will move on to the next item and we will now enter closed session. Is there anything else? Oh, uh, yes. Is there any public comment on the closed session item on public employment? Yes, no speaker cards received, but one hand raised on Zoom. Alita, please go ahead. Um, thank you, uh, Board President Janice Lee. Uh, Alita Dupree, for the record, she and her. Uh, I normally don't comment on uh, closed session items. Don't even know if I have the standing, but I'm going to speak anyway, unless you tell me to stand down. Uh, I see this as a closed session item concerning the Inspector General. 
doesn't say anybody anything else, but I'm presuming that this is an employment evaluation of some kind. So I'm just going to share my feelings. Uh, I state to you, I am not an expert on, still not an expert, probably never will be on the things that an inspector general does. So I have had some good conversations with Harriet, and I hope to continue to. And uh, Harriet uh, has respected me as the person that I am. Uh, but I do go to a number of uh, meetings which involve uh, inspector general matters. And while I'm sure that Harriet is very good at the technical aspects of inspector general work, I find that the meetings are tense, acrimonious, uh, sour grapes. And I think that this is just my perception. Uh, when I see this, I feel that the atmosphere is chilled. I would like to reach out more and learn more about inspectoral general matters uh, so, so I can be informed, so I can be, understand what standards and procedures are of what we should expect from an inspector general. But the inspector general, I maintain to you, uh, is, is an employee uh, subject to your oversight. And I don't think that meetings should feel chilly uh, in which uh, I, I may wonder if I can approach uh, to learn more about inspectoral, inspector general matters. I believe in the importance of what I call a decorum and, and bearing. Uh, if, if I was on the board, I would certainly ask that myself. Why, why the sour grapes? Uh, I could be wrong, but I perceive anger. Uh, no, nobody should be angry at Bart. Here's why. Because when I hear anger, I presume that it is directed at me. Could be wrong. But uh, I'm simply an ordinary writer of Bart who pays fair and follows the rules of conduct. So I want the best for our inspector general program going forward. But I think it needs to be more courteous in its bearing. Thank you. Thank you, Alita. Um, seeing no other public comment then, we will now enter closed session and we will return afterwards.
I'll let the media team know that you're ready to come back. Media, are we ready? Okay. Um, all right, we have returned from closed session, and so we are reopening open session, and there is nothing to report. And so the last item, or we adjourned. Great. Happy holidays. Thank you very much. Recording stopped.